I usually come on here and I talk about the fight, the battle. And I found myself forgetting the people who've had to have the fight, the battle after someone has decided to make a decision to delete themselves. <clears throat> and I find myself doing this each show, trying my best to deliver a message so people can know that there's help out there. And each time I find myself remembering, I forgot to talk about the survivors, the people who are left trying to figure out why, trying to figure out what they miss, trying to figure out how they could have missed it. If you're one of those people who is thinking about taking your life, take a second to think about all the people who's going to miss your smile. Take a second to think about all the people who's going to miss your laugh, your jokes, your sarcasm, some anger that you display. Think about all the people that's going to miss just knowing that you were there, knowing that you're breathing. Before you make a decision that we have to live with, make one you can live with and get help. Three numbers, 988. That's all it takes. Three numbers, 988. That's all we're asking you to do is to keep fighting, keep the battle alive, and keep pushing. Now let's talk football. Nation, we back at it again. Long time coming. It's playoff football. Y'all, listen, let me, let me repeat it again. It's playoff football. The Lions don't play until 8-15 tonight. But it's a playoff football game at Ford Field tonight. I know this might be hard for some of the people in the back to believe it, but it's playoffs. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it slow. Playoff football Sunday. I'm excited. I'm going to have a few rants today. I'm giving y'all 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 pre-warning now. I'm going to have a few rants. I've seen some things that I'm a little concerned with. And also, I'm going to be breaking down how I see this game going and how um, we can win these games and the keys to winning these games. Um, today is one of the games that I'm excited that the Lions um, – We'll have a chance to be a part of. I'm excited because it's going to be at home. Um, but let me be clear. I'm also excited because I believe we win in this game. Yeah, I said that. I'm excited because I believe we win in this game. All right? And guess what? You should too. Let's get into this thing, man. Let's see who in the building with me. Let's see who rocking with me today. It's Sunday. Y'all know I usually don't get on like this. But obviously I had a chance and I had to do it. We got my man Barberry Lion in the building that says, hey, Luke, do you believe that we will beat the Rams tonight? Pretty much everyone not a Lion fan doesn't believe so. <laughs> we <laughs> Wait till I get into it. We got my man one funky Lions fan to hit that like button. We got my man Marcus Land in the building. He says he's in this boy. Uh, we got my man Chris uh, Cash Bar in the building. We got my man Makai Aikaito. I hope I said that right. Dre Barnes is in the building. T-Mac 2023 is in the building. We got Jacob Burnley in the building. Lions fan Express is in the building. My other better looking twin, uh, Anthony from Royal Lions UK, says tonight the Lions are going to treat the Rams like Luke treats cash up. <laughs> Despise that damn cash up. <laughs> we got my man Billy Venable in the building. Makai Holt is in the building. D Map Zoon is in the building. Perry Ball is in the building. KMG King is in the building. 
We got my man Juan W in the building. William Birch is in the building. So let's go crazy tonight. And my man Bulgari is in the building. And Charles Davis is in the building. I'm going to get right into it right off the rip. Um, some of you Lions fans have really, truly ticked me off. Um, you have truly found a way to piss me off. You have. I sat through this whole week. And I listen to every YouTuber, because it's not just Lions fans. It's YouTubers. It's local media, right? Like, like it's a whole plethora of you. And you have started a narrative that is so false, that is such BS, that I'm, I'm offended that you are even a Lions fan. I'm offended because you are trying to do something that is hot garbage. This is playoff football, and the Lions have a home game against a team that they outmatch. They should just beat. But the narrative pushed was the big, bad Matthew Stafford. Now, as a Matthew Stafford fan, as a Matthew Stafford defender, this is a bunch of BS. What happened to y'all? Where's the competitive attitude of y'all at? I'm listening to radio, YouTubers. I'm listening to all these people talking about the big, bad Matthew Stafford and the Rams. What happened to y'all? Where did that shit come from? When did you all of a sudden decide that the Rams are a dangerous team? I would rather play the Packers. Why? So you can play a team that's seen what you do twice? Because that's that's great. Why? You got people out here pushing a trash narrative about the big bad Matthew Stafford and the Rams. And for what? And it's not just fans. It's media. It's other YouTubers pushing this trash-ass narrative. And there's nothing nobody can tell me that makes the Rams so special. Oh, oh well, well, Luke, they got they got Cooper Cup. We got an Amara St. Brown. Well, they got a they got a Puka Noah. And I got a whole entire receiving core, even with if my start and tight end don't play, will still perform. Well, Luke, they can run the ball. Did you not see we got two rushers who almost had a thousand apiece? One of them came up, what, 15? Uh, what did he come up? I forgot. He had 945, I want to say it was. So he came up 60 some, uh, 50 some yards short. Okay. What do they do good? What is it that got people scared? What is it that has fans all in their in they emotions about this? Why is media pushing this narrative? You are at home. I'm listening to people talk about, should you boo, Matt? You damn skippy, you boo him. What do you mean should you boo him? Unless you are his birth mother, father, his direct brother or sister, you boo whoever's on the other side. You don't care until the clock strikes zero, zero to exchange pleasuries. I don't understand where this narrative come from. Why are we doing this? All of a sudden, we should be fearing the ram. Why? I like my team. Flaws and all. And we should outmatch them every step of the way. Every time I heard somebody talk about it, they only talked about the offense. And when they talked about the defense, oh, those two deep tackles. Okay. And you're at home. You should win this game. And it shouldn't be close. It shouldn't even be Near close. It's been 30 years. If you can hear yourself think in that stadium and you in that stadium, go to sleep. Because this is ridiculous. It's been 30 years. If you don't walk out of there and your voice ain't gone, I don't know what you was doing while you was there. But to be sitting up here, acting like we should be afraid, horrified, by Matthew Stafford. 
And the Rams? I will not have it. I cannot have it. It's simple. Dion Axel. What's up, boss? You believe now? You, you, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. Do you believe now? Huh? Do you believe? And if you are not a believer, get the hell out the way for the rest of us believers. If you are one of the people who are all concerned about the Rams, you are all stressed out trying to figure out if we can stop Matthew Stafford, where was that same energy at when half of y'all was screaming, get him the hell out of town? Now all of a sudden he's Matthew Stafford. Where was that energy? Half the fans, media, and every person who's talking like this were the same people saying, get him the hell up out of here. And I get it. If you're not used to the situation, that's good. Shut the hell up if you're not. Shut the hell up, take it all in, and learn. Could a team lose? Sure, everybody can lose. But the bottom line is you are at home. It's been 30 years. You have no respect. And the only thing I keep hearing is how we hyping up there, hyping up Matthew Stafford. Let me show something because I want to I want to point out some things just so people can calm the hell down. And these and these things ain't going to make you feel better. Okay? They're not going to make you feel better. I want you to be aware of this. All right? But I want to show it. So bear with me. To the people who are out there that don't believe, to the people who are not sure, that are a little confused, yesterday something very special happened. You know what that was? The number one scoring offense was the Miami Dolphins in terms of touchdowns. And they lost. You know what? A top two defense, if not number one total in defense, lost yesterday. You had an offense who's number one in scoring. I think they scored, what, one touchdown? You had a defense who gave up, technically they gave up two pick sixes. So we would take that off day 35, but it's like 31 points. Well, Luke, why does that matter? What, what, why, what, what is that? Because that ranking BS means nothing. It's a matchup game. And believe it or not, the Lions have the better matchups. And if I know it's hard to believe. I know it's even harder to believe coming from a person who's been very critical of his general manager, who he has not wavered on his opinion about and his lack thereof or doing things that I think will set us up to go further than ever. But that's not the point. The matchups are in our favor. When I hear people talk about this game, I'm hearing a whole lot about Matthew Stafford. Well, you know what? They got some young guys playing tackles. So you know what? I like the matchups of our veterans to whoop the, the young guys at tackles, but including Aiden Hutchinson. I like that matchup. When they sitting up there talking about Cooper Cup and Puka, you know what? I hate to be, to be the bearer of bad news. The Lions' problems ain't dealing with re good receivers. It's dealing with fast receivers who can get down the field quick. That's not Puka, and that's not Cup. I like that matchup. Put whoever you want on them. I like the matchup. You want to take away Cup? I, I feel good with Branch on him. You think Puka is somebody special? I don't care who you put on him. Oh, but they got a running back. Well, we got linebackers who seem to have activated a whole new level of it. This ranking stuff means deadly squat. The Lions got a beautiful chance to do something else to break some more curses, and that's win a playoff game. And every fan should be behind it. No one should be concerned or worried about no damn uh, 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 um, Matthew Stafford. The Rams are a good team. Adam, you know I love me some you, but no. No. Rams being any other division besides the NFC West, and I promise you they're not even in the playoffs. Let's just be honest. Maybe if they was in the NFC South. Maybe. Probably not. They're not that good 
for me to be sitting up there like hyping them up. I'm sorry. And shout out to my man Adam, in case y'all don't know who that is. And my man Bandit from Bandit Sports, in case y'all don't know who that is. I don't see it, people. This is one of those games to show why we belong there. When you look at it, like my man Will say, this is there's not a better time for us to, to, to get hot than right now. And keep it going. Keep the heat going. Keep the pressure on them. Perry Ball says, my concern is our defense. I hope our defense comes to play. And play who? We have a problem with mobile quarterbacks and fast receivers going deep. They ain't got that. They, that's, they ain't got that. I think Stafford throws two interceptions this game. Trying to get the ball to his guys. Because I expect for our pressure to be on them. I don't see this hype train that they're giving them. I don't. Like, 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 like my man Vocal Coyote says, the Rams are a decent team, but there's a reason they're 10 and 7. They have flaws that the Lions will exploit and win. I, I believe that. But when I'm seeing messages from people say stuff like, I'd rather play the, 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 the Packers. I believe the Packers are getting ready to beat the Cowboys. I do. And you might even get your chance to play them. But for this game, damn that. Let's go out and stump them out. Stump them out. I can't care less about the rest of the stuff. Shout out to my man, Old Timer Dave, my Packer Packer uh, subscriber here. This is a game. If the players aren't on their toes, they could get their ass with. That's I mean, every game is playoffs, and that and, it's, and when you're in the playoff, everything is heightened. I should be able I should be able to know who farted and everything. Why? Because my my senses are at a point to where I'm paying attention to everything. That's how I see it. When Stafford, Puka, Cup, and Kyrie are on the field together, they are the best offense in the league statistically. Their interior rush is tough, especially with our guards have been. Then you run stretch plays. This is not hard. This is this is not a this this the only challenge here is making sure you don't beat yourself. There is no there is no juggernaut coming into Fort Field today. Just a lot of fans who was concerned that old curses can come up. Old superstitions can now arise. This is playoff football talk, people. The rankings, statistics, and all that out the window. I've seen it too many times in the playoffs where all these people come in, rank high, doing all these great things out the window. No one cares. Toss it out. Why? Because at the end of the day, none of it matters. What you do on the day is what matters. And if you are not ready to come into this game with an attitude to play to win this game by halftime, then your ass shouldn't be on the field. We should not be in the playoffs. We should not be given the opportunity or, or, or be in the position in the first place. If we can't go in and just simply say, you know what? I'm coming in with a purpose. I know that I'm at Ross St. Brown is. I know Ada Hutchinson is because they're still mad about what happened with the Cowboy game. But no matter how the path was drawn up, you need to come in with a sense of urgency and this attitude. That's what I want to see. And as a Lions fan, you should not be you should not be hyped. The statistics and all that means nothing. Means nothing. The team who wants it will get it. Like, like, let me put this, let me put it out there. I'm again, this is a show for you people, for the people to come in and talk about. It. I'm putting I'm putting the link in early and everything. Why? Because I want to talk to people. 
I'm tired of the narrative. I got simple keys to this game. It's not hard. Very simple. Aiden Hutchinson and whoever's playing opposite of him need to whoop ass. Say it with me. Uh, whoop ass. That's all you got to do. Because when you start doing that, you can get to Stafford. You can make things happen. We Both teams got a problem giving up big plays. But I'm looking at it like we need to be coming in with an attitude of putting pressure on them. But whoop ass is what I'm expecting from them too, whoever those guys are. I got my first guest coming in the building. Let me bring my man's Uncle Rumble 81 in the building. Rumble, what's going on, brother? What's up, Luke, man? What's up, chat, man? Listen, it's Sunday. It's Lions playoff football. It's cold as hell outside, uh, and I'm excited. I just, oh. I just, I need, I want to know what your thoughts are about the game, um, what you expect for them to happen, and also, um, you know, I don't know if you like me, but I'm expecting a whole lot of whoop ass. That's just I am me. too. I am too. Uh, look here, man. These guys are, you know, any any team that we have ties with, our team seems to take it up another notch. Uh, obviously, we do have ties with the Rams. Uh, we we got their old quarterback and their old uh, GM assistant. Um, but yeah, man, th- these these boys are ready. Uh, they've been putting on for the city all year. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Stafford is going to... It, it, we need to, like you said, make Stafford uncomfortable. He needs to be tasting that Ford Field turf. Um, and we need to implement no-fly zone. I need I need two or three picks from Stafford. I, 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 need, to, I need there to be no doubt left in that field tonight. And I'm predicting the Lions, like you are, to go out there and whoop ass, like you said. Uh, I think we're going to score 40 points. And let's not, you know, let, let's not beat around the bush, man. Um, we, we've given Dan slack. You know, we've been giving him shit for going, for, or excuse me, cursing. But we've been giving him crap for going for it. Uh, we've been giving him crap, you know. Not me. Gamble. You know but me. I, I have is, it. I love it. Right. This is one of them games where. You know, much like he did against Sean Payton this year, man. If if we're on a two yard line, and uh, go for it, I don't care what the score is, man. Yep. Like let them guys eat, let them eat. I don't care about you can throw all the BS out the window, man. We're not here to make friends. Yes, Stafford, you were you were here, but you're no longer here. So we're here to make friends. We're here to put the NFC on notice, and we're here to let the NFL know they they gonna have problems with us if we make it deeper than the playoffs. So yeah, man, Ford Field needs to be rocking. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of the things for me where I'm looking at the advantages. You got a home game for the first time. Every person who coming to drink in the, in the game sober, God bless you, but you should walk out without a voice. Your eardrums should be almost p- p- paralyzed. Okay, and I shouldn't even be able to hear the cadence. I should never. I should not be able to hear blue nothing, red. No, I don't want to hear no cadence. Because it should be that loud in there. And then on top of that, I expect for when they are on offense, for our defense to be like a bunch of raising killer bees. I want them to just be swarming and moving constantly, creating problems and vision and stuff. And then after the game, once we won convincingly, because I got us winning by by 10. um, Really, I got us winning by more than 10, but I'm being generous. By 10. (laughs) And... Once that's over with, then we can talk about it. We'll bring in the rest of it. So I'm just saying, keep it 100 with me and, and, and just go out and do and handle your business. We have the better matchups. I mean, yeah, look, look, look at their look at their team defensively. Once you talk about Ernest, who I think can't cover the running back out the backfield, no matter who it is, whether that be David Montgomery, um, whether that be Gibbs, he ain't covering them. Okay, Ernest Turner Donald. Yep. Then who else? Because everything yeah. is happening within that front seven. Yes, exactly. I agree so, with you. So I'm and just we know, saying. we know, we know. Gibbs doesn't need much room to make a player miss. I mean, he's been doing that all season. We know. Yep. Uh, we know we got an O line that is very mobile. So if you get those guys out there, you know, moving around, especially like Panay, and he's your lead blocker. I don't give a fuck what your linebacker is. I, I give him that nod all day. I think Panay yep. will be able to – he'll – man. And then we we have wide receivers who love the block too. So uh, this is – you know, dare I say it, this is the most complete team Detroit has on the offensive side of the ball. They all block for one another, and they don't care who gets the shine. 
and uh it's gonna be a thing of beauty man tonight so yeah let me break it my man william i'm gonna put you to the back real quick uh just hold tight for me rumble and i'll bring yes, us sir. all back in at once my man william burgess in the building will what up though how you doing luke how you doing I'm doing good. I mean, how you feeling about this game? I've seen a lot of talk about Matthew Stafford, the big bad wolf. He's going to come in here and huff and puff and blow down for a field. What are your thoughts on this game? Because for me, this is an easy win. Man, I, I love Matthew Stafford to death. What he, what he did for the city, like, I'll never put it behind him. But, like, even Calvin Johnson said it. He's coming to our home now. He left our home. He chose to leave our home. As much as I love him, he can get out of here with that disrespect. He chose not to go through this rebuild. He chose to go somewhere else. So, no, like, as much as I love him, for this game, he's going to war. There's no, like, th there should be no reserves about that. No, and the worst part about it is, like I said, these narratives that's being pushed by people is, is BS. And people need to understand this. You don't. You did not want Green Bay this first game. Green Bay knows you very well, okay? And Green Bay, the game that they had on Thanksgiving, I don't really count that as, as a, a big deal because you had a short week. You had you had a bunch of games in a short period of time. So, okay, cool. You dropped it. All right, it is what it is. But it nonetheless – before the defensive turnaround where our, our – I'll say our defense, these past like uh, – Ever since Thanksgiving, our defense has been a monster. Like, creating pressure, getting turnovers. Like, I don't care if we're giving up 20, uh, 24 points. If we're getting two turnovers, we're getting possessions back for our offense. Yes, I'll take that every day of the week. That's just, uh, like, and one thing I will also say, we aren't reusing blitzes. Like, from week to week, it almost feels like Aaron Glenn sat all season drawing up every exotic look he could, his mind could imagine. And just, all right, it's the, it's the final stretch. Let's start unloading this clip. And just, I mean, there was one last game that was insane. He, it was a double-A gap mug look. We have six guys at the line. We blitz the interior guys, drop the DNs out. If he's coming from the field to the A gap, I mean, like crazy looks, absolutely crazy stuff. And I'm so happy because it feels like we are just a dynamic defense, and we are just not, we are not giving anyone the same look week to week. So it's tough as hell for them to get a beat on what we're going to do. I, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm again. I'm not usually trying to just be different. I just see it differently. I think that the biggest issue that you saw with the defense early on and now was just the fact that players started executing. It's just that simple. You don't execute, you go to the bench, and that was the message that was sent: execute or go to the bench. And I love that they took that approach because for the longest there were people who was out there who just wasn't executing. Hell, we can go back as far as to the to the Cowboy game where. Perfect example is you get a perfect blitz dialed up, and Derek Barnes just, I, you know, mm -hmm. I can't even call it a whiff, right? But when you don't execute, you have mistakes. And there are still other issues that we have, but in this game, they do a lot of their work from those inside slot positions. And I'm, I'm sorry, I feel good about those matchups. I do. I feel really, really good about it. I feel like when looking at this game, the Lions come out, score, we get a stop, we score again, then they finally score, then we score again, and we just keep putting the pressure on them. I think this is a game where they're going to put too much attention on Amin Ross St. Brown, especially with him um, being given the all-pro nod first team, and, and they're going to start to realize, holy smoke, we got to stop all these other weapons, and I don't think they can do it. I expect us to win this game and not even, not even lose a breath of fresh air in doing it. I really do believe that we should win this game by more than two scores. I believe that. I think I think the biggest area of concern in my eyes for how this would play out would be their interior pass rush between – I mean, Cody Turner has played like the best defensive tackle in the rookie class, uh, just pass rush-wise, and Aaron Donald is Aaron Donald is Aaron Donald. He, he's always going to be a threat. So, as long – and like – Stafford's shown it all year. If he is protected, 
this offense is humming. If he isn't protected, we're going to have issues. So as long as we can keep those two guys that interior rush handle, our offense is going to go crazy. 32 teams, the Thirty-two teams start the year off battling for a chance to get to the Super Bowl and win it, right? And 32 teams, I can put that statement if the quarterback is protected. I can care less about perfect scenarios because guess what? The Lions should be creating all the most uncomfortable scenarios. All I've been hearing are these false pro football focus stats about pressure. Damn that. Get the quarterback down. Get him to the ground. Let's end drives. Keep the turnovers going and score on the turnovers. If it's one area that I want to see the Lions approve upon today is when you get a goddamn turnover, score on it because we have not been doing that. We getting turnovers and been getting turnovers and not getting points off of it. Score on it. In fact, talking about keys to the game, I talked about Aiden Hutchinson versus these young tackles and whoever's playing opposite of him, right? Because these are some of the things. But another key that I had was smart aggression, coach. I want him to stay the course of his aggressive play calling on fourth downs and stuff, but be smart about it. Some situations don't call for it, right? Make sure that when you're doing it, you're doing it in an area where, hey, it's not going to put your defense behind the eight ball. So smart aggression. But as far as that, yeah, I expect for them to put a lot of the onus on them. Yeah, boo, boo Stafford. Uh, if it's a coach, a scout, if it, hell, if it was a sponsor who sponsored the Lions and now sponsors the Rams, boo they ass too. <laughs> okay? I don't care if Stafford comes there with his wife and kids. If the kids got on Ram uniform, boo them too. Until the game is over, we are not friends. We're not. You're in the way of what I want. And at the end of the day, what I want, I'm going to get if it means eliminating you. After I eliminate you, we can hug it out. That's the mentality I want them to come in with. What else you got for us before I add another guest in and then hold you off to the back? What else? Nothing too much. Just optimism is forever. The game ain't done until the clock hits zero. Just remember that. So whether we're up, we got to keep coming. We got to keep winning. If we're down, there's always a shot. Always. Football is a wild game. It is. I mean, like I said, I had the Texans beating the Browns yesterday. I suspected that the Texans were going to beat the Browns up. I just I felt like the Joe Flacco story was a good story. It was <coughs> – excuse me. It was a good story, but I felt like your defense can only do so much when you don't have a complimentary offense. And one of the things that the Lions have had a problem with is not playing complimentary football. But when they play complimentary football, there's no question or no doubt that who we are. And that's what's going to have to happen today. And that's what I suspect would happen. There would be a lot of complimentary football from special teams to defense to offense. Everyone would compliment everyone. And I think Stafford is going to walk away. because they, You know they're going to mic them up, but we're going to hear about it later. He's going to say, hey, man, congratulations. I'm happy for y'all. Uh, go out and win the whole thing. That's going to happen. But until then, okay, and again, this is from a Stafford fan, a Stafford defender. F him. F him. Like, that's just the way I see it. Until this game is over, I can care less about the Stafford talk. I don't see a guy who I should be worried about. I just don't. Sorry. Sorry. not. I'm sorry I'm not sorry about it, to be honest with you. Well, let me put you to the back, man. Let me see who is uh who else we got in the building coming in, my brother. Just hang tight. And then we'll reconvene. We got my man Crimson Shadow coming in the building. What's going on, Crimson? Oh, hey, nothing much. Long time no see. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> I see you got on your, your Lions hat and your Lions gear. Uh, you said, who thought the Texans were going to blow out the Elves? I mean, who the heck thought they were going to get 45 on that defense? Well, yeah, they did get 45. You got to think, there was two pick sixes. There was yeah. two pick sixes. So the two pick sixes taken off of it, but I get your point. Yeah, I mean, um, 45, that blew my mind. I mean, I expected it to be like a low-scoring game. I thought Flacco was just going to revert back to usual Flacco, but I didn't expect like 45. I yeah, and like I said – but so yeah, what, do you, what do you got for it? Because I'm, I mean, again, and I'm gonna talk about the Laporta talk too because I think it's funny because I have this, this, this the same fan base that I heard we don't need tight ends and now tight end goes down. Oh God, what are we gonna do? I, I mean, I don't know. I asked that. I'm not really too worried about it. I still like Brock. Brock was fine with us when we traded Hawk, and he's still a competent enough tight end. 
But like I said, I'm sharing the same sentiments with you when it came to like Stafford. It's like when uh, he won the Super Bowl, everyone's all celebrating about it. And I'm just like sitting here in the back going, you know how much of an effing insult that is to see the first year and he wins an effing Super Bowl? That is so backhanded. And the fact that we were celebrating that, it just still makes me want to puke. It's- but but the, the reality of it is, is this. All that can be be handled just by the Lions coming out, handling the business and getting things done the way it's supposed to be getting done. Exactly. This is a this is a this is a business trip that we get to travel at home. We didn't have to leave the state. So right. it's a business trip. You know, show I'll, up and show out. I'll As be a honest, fan base. I can't be the only one thinking this looks like the most scripted ass game I ever seen. This feels the most like this feels like a WWE matchup almost. It just feels so effing fabricated and fake to me. I'm like Stafford's coming back in a playoff game. It's like this feels like some WWE um what do you call it? Pay-per-view shit I'm looking at here. I'm like, what the heck? This looks so fucking scripted. <laughs> I don't you, you know, listen, this this is what I this is what I don't want to do. And it's not it's not towards you, Crimson. I just want to put this out there. If you believe that this game is scripted, rigged, all the other stuff you coming up with, don't watch this shit. Seriously, don't watch it. If you believe that they, that is so slanted and so set up and so scripted that every person's in on it from everybody minus the fans, you should not watch this product. It all just really the reason, matters. The reason, the reason I don't like that narrative is because once you go down that road, it sounds like we're presetting an excuse if things don't go our way. But if the script say we win, what a great win. So I don't want to... I don't want to hear about scripts. I don't want to hear about theories. I don't want to hear about all that other stuff because oh, at yeah. the end by of the all day, means, if we lose, it's our own damn fault. At the like end the of the Cowboys day, game, if you like, believe that, just don't watch it. That's all I'm saying. Just don't okay. watch it. Like I say, man, it's it's like the freaking Cowboys game where everyone felt like Jerry Jones or whatever paid that shit off. No, we fucked ourselves. There's no doubt about it. We screwed ourselves over and we kept trying to go for it. Don't get me wrong. I don't blame Dan for not trusting his defense. Fuck, I don't trust them half the time. I expect this no, game to be a gun show. No, I, I disagree with that statement too. Because at the end of the day, what do you like? I'm not trying to be funny. You're playing to win the game. And, and this that. and and everybody's going. This is the thing that I love about people. Everybody complains about Dan Campbell going for it on fourth down only when we don't get it. But when we get it, yeah, all exactly. the balls on him. He's got big balls. His balls should be seen from the back. Look how huge them nuts is. That's how everybody talks about him when it when it works. But when yeah. it doesn't work, then everybody's critical. And I never heard Golden State Warrior fans be like, "Man, we just shoot too many threes." Who you are, you will live and die by your decisions. And if those decisions are you know, you're going for it on fourth down, cool. But what the Lions did is set up a trend where it forced other people to say, well, we got four downs, let's go for it. And I'm cool yeah. with that. But I don't want to hear about this complaining about that. When I say I want him to be have smart aggression, I want smart aggression where yeah, he's but, able to do certain things. Yeah, but you also don't want to hear about, you know, us going back to the whole blame the refs thing and just let the refs be the crutch thing as well. We, we've again? lived on that narrative for a long ass time as well. What? Do you, what? What's narrative? One more time. You know the me? refs always fuck us. It's always we're never going to get anywhere because the refs. You know that narrative. It's been around for years. Listen, this this is what I'm saying right here. Listen, this this is playoff football. All that. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say this again. It's not at you, Crimson. This is to any fan any who party. believes this. All that loser mentality shit. Please leave the chat. I don't yeah. want to hear that same old lion loser mentality shit. The same way y'all was acting like y'all was afraid of going against the Rams. Take that loser mentality somewhere else. On today's channel, we are talking about a winner's mentality, a mentality that is meant for champions, a mentality that is meant for people who want to win, who want to like winners. And all I'm saying is, is this, if you are of the belief of a lot of this losing mental, I don't want to hear about no officiating. I don't want to hear about no going for it on fourth down. I don't want to. What I want to hear is real football conversations about a real football game that evolves around real football decisions that equates to winning. How do we beat a Rams team? 
How does the Rams team possibly beat us? But all the rest of the stuff, the officials and that, not right. No, not today. Catch me when the game is over. I might be more open to it. But that's yeah. a loser's mentality. Yeah, exactly. And we don't need the team to think that either. It needs to all be win, win, win. And we got a lot of guys in here with that mentality. I'm in raw. You, you, I can only imagine how effing hyped up he's getting right now. Oh, my God. Or Aiden, for God's sakes. I, it's good to see Aiden's getting hot later in the season. Perfect timing. And I think James Houston, he's also playing today as well. Or is that limited? Listen, I think they saying that James Houston could be available. I think that Laporta does play, but he plays in a limited role. Um, probably yeah. goal line if 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 at, if at all that. And if he don't play, I don't care. I like the fact that they went on to put James Mitchell to the to the IR because I think Brock Wright will get you more production. Yes. and I'm okay. I'm okay with them um, doing this because when you look at when they added was it Frisky, they're adding people who they can continue to run the ball with. So I'm cool with that. I'm not worried about the J Mo plan or not. If he do. Great, because he's going to have a big day. But if he don't, great. They still got problems with trying to stop all the other receivers. I mean, and it sucks team, to lock Raymond. I love me some Khalif Raymond. <laughs> it really sucks to lose him. You know, so I'm just saying, we we got people that can perform. I'm not I'm not worried about that. I believe that the Lions will show up. I believe that they will win this game. Everybody got problems. What else you got for me, Krenz, before I bring in one more guest and then we try to converge on it and have a conversation? I just – I cannot with the loser's mentality today. I get that. I do. But you're going to have – you know dang well. I'm just warning the things that I'm like, oh, dear Lord, I can already see this shit coming a mile away. And I'm like, I pray it doesn't. I do not want to hear this all fucking month or – fuck, I'll hear it for a year. I know that for a fact. But so yeah. He's saying that James Houston is out. Mitchell has uh, uh, has mm-hmm. broken hand. He's out. Laporta is trending uh, north. So he's questionable. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. So, yeah, that's why he's on IR. But, yeah, if you want to beat a Rams team, we need to get in Stafford's face. You cannot let that man get deep balls. He sucks at the short throw, but damn, can he throw himself a laser. Make shut Cup down, shut Pakunu, whatever the heck his name is down, for the love of God. And for the love of God, protect Goff from Darnold. If Darnold gets anywhere near him, we're screwed. For the love of God, everyone needs to wake up. Goff needs to be on his A game for this. I expect him to be. All right, listen, I hear you. Let me bring in my next guest, man. Hang back in the back for me. Um, like I said, I bring us all back in. We have open discussion. I'm I'm just too stoked. I'm only looking for real football answers. I'm not, I, you know, everybody got an opinion, and it's all great. But can your opinion have a little bit of, like, substance behind it? Like, can you tell me something I don't know? Can you tell me something that lines up with football? Right. Like, tell me, hey, they got Aaron Donald. He's been doing this and he's getting this and this and this. You know, OK, give me that so I can respond to that. I can't respond to the same old Lion fan being worried, already setting up excuses in case we don't do what we should do, which is handle our business. Let me bring in Bandit from Bandit Sports. What's up, brother? What it do, Luke? What's, man, your voice already gone. You already screaming for the Lions? Yeah, already. We had a show earlier. Already. We need to change the narrative of this game. This is not Stafford's game. This is golf's game. Exactly. You know I mean? Like, I've been here. I'm so tired. They brought it up earlier. Like, we're so tired of hearing about Stafford that we don't hear about golf. You feel me? Like, how, how that whole Rams organization gave up on him. How they traded him away with two first-round picks because they didn't believe in him. They believed in somebody else. You feel me? So, Trapper, Stafford wanted traded. He, you know, we just traded him on our own. He wanted that. We gave that man what he wanted. Hey, compliments to him to go, he's going to get a championship better there, but he's coming back into our house. We should, we should boo the hell out of him. You feel me? Like, yeah, we think for what Stafford did, but this whole narrative about the Stafford, this is golf game. And, like, and, to prove and, everybody and, wrong. That's the thing. I told people last year, if you know, if you were so confident and so hyped about your quarterback, a.k.a. golf, you pay him now. No, you got to give him another year. Okay, well, here we are. Get behind him because that's what you asked for. You asked for another year for him to do it, so get behind him. These narratives about all the – people forget. They, oh, is Stafford coming back to – to no, what about, how, like you said, how they treated freaking golf? You don't think he pissed about it? You don't think he's stoked to have a game at home and beat the coach who said that he couldn't do it and trade it and beat the guy who they traded for, who they said could do it, who went on to win the Super Bowl? You trade you to a place where people trade players to die. When they trade you to Detroit, you don't. 
They don't plan on you to do nothing. They plan you to your career is about to come to the end. They want his career to come to the end. Change that whole narrative, bro, and bring this city back to where we are right now. This is golf's game, man. Like, and, and to be honest with you, I hate to say this because this is gonna be this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, but they're not gonna like it though. This not even a game for golf to win. This is a game for golf to manage because we should be running the ball to nauseum. Because I'm telling you right now, if you if you wanted to go by all those rankings and all those stats and all that BS, if you wanted to go by, they've given up a lot of rushing yards. And our running backs, both of them, know how to make the first person miss every single time. Look, I got a question. Can you name me anybody in any secondary? That was my question. <laughs> that was my question. Who Who is those guys that we should be worried about? They acting like we're going to get that Super Bowl team that had – Ramsey and, 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 and all these other people. No, we're not doing that. And this is not a prime Aaron Donald. This is Donald in his last couple years. Y'all. Like, yeah, he's not that retired. dominant player he's that he was retired. a couple years ago. It's like this is this is the reality of it. You know, like I know people don't want to believe it, but this is the reality of it. I, I, do, I just want people to move past these narratives. I'm sorry. Like every I, I said it earlier. Every time I hear people talk, all they talk about is the offense. Like, okay. You talk about the offense. If we give up 24, we should score 38. I'm sorry. This this they, they, they don't they give up a lot of big plays too. And I I'm mean we for, got we got guys with the speed to do it. I'm looking for a big game from Effie too. If he is a defensive playmaker, he he'll change it on his defense. There's one person, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, there's one person who can single handedly change this game and wreck this whole entire thing for them there's one person i'm going y'all ready for it you listening band i'm listening aiden hutcherson yes you sir have to whoop the tackles ass there is no reason why this tackle this particular tackle who many may argue has played well there's no reason why you should not be whooping on this tackle? There's no reason. Be bodying that boy, man. Every time not whooping him, bro. He's bodying him, bro. They should be working the hell out these tackles. Aline McNeil gonna do his part up the middle. Okay, yes, I'm just gonna keep it 100. Aline McNeil gonna do his part, but Aiden Hutchinson is gonna sack the dinner table. Jerry Goff to. simply have to serve the meal. And the run game is going to be the meal. I'm not looking for anything to be overcomplicated. I'm looking for us to close out drive 90% of our possessions. And I believe we can do that. If J-Mo plays this game, I expect that he's going to take the top off at least twice this game. If J-Mo don't play this game, good luck. We should be running the ball to the point that when they do throw the ball to, to St. Brown, there's nothing you can do. You know what happens when you uh, serve out the meal? That's when that play-action game get open, and that's St. Brown in the middle. Exactly. That's, and that's what that's you're looking for. That's game on a deep, a deep streak. That's what you're looking for. <laughs> you're looking for matchups that they can't cover. And I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, when you go through and you look at this team, I'm not afraid of these people. Not like they, I'm not afraid of their safeties. I'm not afraid of their cornerbacks. We should be working their ass. Once you go Donald, Turner, Ernest Jones, we done talking. We done talking. If we're not putting up points, I don't know what to tell you. I don't. The Lions should be winning this game convincingly. Seriously. Yes, this sir. this is a, this is a perfect game that they brought Aiden Hutchinson in for. Now, you say you upset about how they treated you versus the Cowboys. Take some of it out on the Rams. That's all I'm saying. What else you got for me? All right, that was it. That's all I can do is change the narrative for it, man. This is a golf game, not Stafford's game, man. 100%. I got the that link in the chat. If you want to jump in, talk your talk and get out. Please do so. I'm going to bring everybody else back in with us, Bandit, so we can have an open discussion about it. I'm just giving a heads-up disclaimer. If you come in and you ain't ready to talk football to me, 
I'm gonna call it because I'm not. We're not accepting that loser's mentality today. We're not. I want football analysis. Yes, I sir. want national conversations. I want to hear about who. Um, I want to hear about why this person being out hurts the offense. Because I can tell you that the injuries that we got for this game don't bother me one bit. We should still win with those injuries. That's just my view. Let me bring everybody else back in. Uh, you know, just so to have a conversation. And again, y'all hear how I feel about it. I'm not convinced. I'm sorry. I'm just not convinced that I should be concerned. This is the game. And to me, here are the keys that I wrote down to the game. I'll let y'all respond to this when I give y'all these keys. I said, listen, the Lions are fifth in rushing. The Rams are 11th. Their rushing attack relies on a young rookie guy who has truly uh, – had a good season so thus far, right? We got two running backs who should be killing them. I'm sorry. Aiden Hudson. Yes, I told you. He has to have that game to be, to be like, this is why you bring him in. Because I know everybody got hyped about him making the Pro Bowl, but let's be honest. All pros is the only thing that matters. And it really he's gonna does. He's going to have to show why – they snubbing him from the all-pro team is a, a mistake. This is the game to do it. Defense taking away Cooper Cup. I'm not worried about Puka. Just take away not Cup. Either. Take Cup out of the equation because Cup is more reliable than Puka. Puka, Puka going to get his catches. But guess what? We've played teams and given up catches, a.k.a. J uh, Justin Jefferson. We've given that up. You yeah. still got to get pressure um, and, and get the quarterback down. Offense, no turnovers. I'm going to say this again. This is the thing that's been killing me. Turn on offense, please no turnovers. Take care of the ball. Treat the ball like it's your newborn baby. You wouldn't put that baby on the ground, don't put my damn ball on the ground. I don't want turnovers, no interceptions, no fumbles, no bad snaps. I don't want none of that. I, I don't want to see none of that. I gave y'all a minimum of three penalties for the whole game. Three penalties because y'all should be able to hear a rat piss on cotton when you're on offense. So there's no reason to have mental miscues there. I got on there, smart aggression from the coach. Keep going for it on fourth down. But be mindful that how every situation sets up a different situation. Just because you went for it on fourth down, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm the first one to tell you this. If we are in the red zone, ten yards to there to the to the go to the touchdown to the end zone, on fourth, I'm going for it every single time. Go for it. Hey man, add to, the clock, man, please. They're gonna have to drive ninety yards at best to get down there and score. Take it. And to your point, we know Stafford's gonna throw the ball forty-five times. We need uh, to oh, implement absolutely. the no-fly zone. We which got is the secondary why, to do it. Which is why my next point was secondary. Stay ready, cause these balls gonna come your way. He's throwing the ball forty five times, and that's why I said if he's gonna be a big player maker in this game, cause he's gonna be down in that box blitzing, he's gonna be sitting back. They ain't gonna know what to do with if he. Then you got CJ, GJ running around there too. Oh, yeah. Two wild hawks, man, over some oh, yeah. dead meat. You feel me? So oh, you, yeah. you exactly this, this, this idea. This one thing I try to explain to people. If you put if you put branch on cup, matter of fact, let's put branch on Puka. Let's put CJ on on cup. Right, you still got Iffy and Kirby in the get just stay ready. The balls is coming towards you. Facts, yes. Seize the moment. He's got to throw the ball 45 times because they're not gonna be able to run on us. Hey, look, but what about this? What if they put they start off with Iffy on cup and then that corner blitz, and then you got CJ covering cup while he's going that corner blitz? You can work it like, like that too. Bro. I mean, but this, so this is beauty, this the beauty of this secondary. matchup. So this is why I don't understand Man. that narrative that, oh, we, we got to play Stafford in the Rams and I'd rather have played. No, this matchup is for you. There's no better matchup than this. Is a, this is not – this should be considered unfair. And I know there's some Ram fans in here who is like, oh, he delusional. He just don't know. But I'm going to be back when hey, he goes. Hey, ain't all that fast either. Wait, Cam no. Sutton has a problem with what? Cam Sutton has I mean, a problem with what? Fast shifty receivers. These fast, receivers fast are not fast, receivers bro. Will go deep. So I'm just, I'm, I'm go, just putting it out there. I'm gonna make it even more simple. We've had Stafford for 12 years, and he is known to throw picks. So yes, is, yeah, he's like he's a better Carson Wentz. Y'all had he, him for he three. He, he's not a mobile quarterback. He's not mobile. Yeah, so we. Like, 
Now, the, the the last thing I got down as a key to my game, this is the big one, because this is the one that people are not going to realize is going to have to happen. Get the tight ends super involved early, because I'm going to tell you right now, this idea that Laporte is gone, that they're not going to go to the tight end, get them involved. Get them involved, because I don't care who the tight end If the tight end is Bandit, if the tight end is Crimson, if it's Will, if it's, if it's, if it's Rumble, throw the fucking ball to him. Make the linebackers still have to defend them. They didn't just get to the NFL because they gave somebody a reach around. Use them. Use them. Play the player that you have. And don't be afraid to do so. If you're going to run the ball, they're going to have to block. If you're going to throw the ball, they're going to have to catch. Use them. Okay? And I'm telling you right now. Why is James I, used, I mean, James Mitchell on uh, IR. I know. It's a good reason he on IR. I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it. Remember, I'm, no. I'm on record. I hated that pick. I hated it. My soul hated it to this day. I hated it. He was all I ever did. You ran, you ran short of the first. I'm, don't even get me started. I don't even want to go down that road. But my point I'm trying to make is, is these are the keys that I see to us winning. Now, I can give you keys to us losing, but since how I, it's hard for me to find as many as I found to win, that's a little bit tough. I just we, ain't gonna talk, we ain't gonna bring that bad juju up, man. Don't even bring that bad juju up, man. I'm just yeah, saying, exactly. I just put up there. Vegas is in our favor. Yeah. How yeah, we ain't, like you said, we ain't the same old lions. She just new fucking excuse my friends, new freaking lions, man. We ain't gonna bring no bad juju up, man. Let's, but the reality is, is this: the lions got to still go out and perform. The lions themselves got to still go out and show up. And guess what? Part of that is you, the fans, you who go into the game. I would go to the game, but the last time I went to the game, I walked out with 19. And if you if you don't know what the first part of that is, hmm. I, I, I ain't got the energy to do it this time. I'm sorry. That's an interesting fact Billy just brought up and, there. And no, what, listen, what, Stafford what coming point? back to Detroit and he's very trying to prove golf was about was, was well, he's gonna try to have Stafford go at least 40 times. Yeah, to Billy's point though, last game he threw 55 times. Like he's gonna throw the ball over 35 times. Maybe I was wrong for saying 40, but they, in this game, in this game, it's, it's going to be over forty times. In yeah. this it's game, times. it's going to be over forty yeah. times because they they're not going they're not going to be able to get a run game going. You know what I'm saying? Will, let me ask you a question. What what do you see as the biggest obstacle for the Lions defense going into this game? Like like what's that one thing that's like? Look, they, if they if they don't contain this, it's going to be a long day. That's the only thing I can think of, but that's all. I, I don't know what happened to Will. Will. Yes, sir. Well, right. What is that? What is that? The biggest obstacle for the Lions defense, like that one thing that you look at and you like, if they don't contain this, it's going to be a long day. It's if we cannot create havoc with our front seven. That has been the biggest change of the past four uh, four weeks. I believe all twenty two sports talked about it uh, when he was on At the beginning of the season. We tried a lot more vanilla looks where we were trying to just. Rush four, we believe we get home with four. But these past five weeks, I mean, we've been doing everything, throwing every ounce of spaghetti at the wall, bro. We've been doing everything we can to make them uncomfortable and get them looks they haven't seen before. So it's just, and like, I know, I know people are happy with Vildor. I don't understand why. I, I don't either. Don't, but we, they don't get. Listen, you. Don't see, I told you, you're not. You're not gonna get me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was doing. Yeah. Until you said that, I'm like, listen, this guy should not be starting. But we got to work with what we got to work with. But go ahead. I digress. Yeah. Exactly. Like we got Cam Sutton, who's a good number two corner. We don't have a legit. I mean, the rest of our corner room is a bunch of undrafted free agents. So, in my mind, we got to, like, that's why our pressure rate has amped up so much. If we can just get pressure on the quarterback, it'll alleviate some of the pressure that's on our cornerback room. But we know they can't, you know, cover for very long. So, let's make sure they don't have to. And and you know what? Like I said, this is one of the games where this is what you, this is why you get taken second overall. Now, I, I I love that we got a Rams fan in here. Shout out to Dan. Uh, Dan, you are more than welcome to jump on. All you need is a phone with a microphone. Feel free to hop in here and have a good conversation. It ain't going to hurt my feelings one way or the other. I'm, I'm going to have an honest conversation with you. But Rams too good against the run. Now, I What's I didn't make this up. And I could care less about these rankings, people. So just, just bear with me, though. It's not the rankings that I'm looking at. 
it's this number. You see this? Yards Let's look at that. Carry. Now, I don't mm. know about y'all, but in rough math, just take the point two part out and leave the four. If I run the ball two times, that's eight yards, right? Because four plus four. Right third, right. you're supposed to right. down. Right. Yep, and then that means it's probably third and two, which means, and I'm getting four for that one too, right? Hypothetically. So that's 12 yards. So four times three is 12. I mean, my math is still on point, right? Mm -hmm. Russian team, Russian defense. Is good against the run, giving up four yards of carry. I just somebody talk to me. I mean, also, you're also gonna time, add in. Uh, sorry, go. I mean, you're also gonna add in how much can Gibbs and uh <clears throat> Monty can get on average. You could throw that in there too. They're a little above average when it comes to most running backs they go against. And, and, and this brings me to my next point, but I'll let I'll let my man Will give his point. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, so he's saying Rams too good against the run. They allow 107 yards a game. We we allow 88. Like if we're talking punch for punch about oh we can do this well, you're you're saying you're you got a little bit you, you got like a twenty dollar steak looking at a hundred dollar steakhouse, bro. I, I don't I like think that that's the right argument against us, like right? Man. But but I, I look at it like this too. And again, Dan is a Rams fan. I you know, he's supposed to support his team, right? Make no yeah. mistake about that. He's supposed to support his team. But Dan, if y'all are giving up 4.2 yards a game and Jameer Gibbs is averaging 5.2, yeah, that tells me that we should be able to run the ball on y'all. Oh, you're gonna learn today. You know, this that, that tells that me that. And, and if you if you still feel like, well, we'll take him out, great. You snuffed him, right? You, st you stopped him. Because we're not ranked high rushing for a reason. We're fifth in rushing for a reason. But David Montgomery's still getting 4.6. So You're going to have to stop both. And that's a high, high challenge right there. A very high challenge. A very high challenge. And so... When you start to go to the the uh, the rushing offense, when you start to just look at that part of it, if you broke this down into yards per carry, you've seen things like this. One, two, three, four, five. The Lions are still ranked fifth. Y'all down here. The problem is, is when you go to the rushing defense, See, that's where stuff gets different. That's where it changes. Because you have to come all the way back up. Readjust this thing to see that they're only giving up 3.7. So that rushing thing that you're talking about, unless you finna commit to 30 carries, I ain't concerned about. It. I'm just being honest. We and should be running the ball. Is and my question is with this is, are they giving up like yak yards? Are they drag being dragged for yards? Are they giving up big holes and guys that are finesse dudes like Gibbs just blasting through the hole? What are they giving up? What's this defense's weakness here? I'm wondering on this D line. You talking about for the Rams? Yes. Do they I, give think up holes? You, I think what you're saying is, is this. I think that a lot of those runs that you're getting are the fact that they do have interior help. But if I run a stretch play or I run a trap play, it's working. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's my. You know what? Nope. First of all, I love people like this. I love people like this. Nobody talks. Okay, I need. I need this. My man Dan said he gonna show up and show and talk about it. Dan. Huh. Hey man. Hey, can you guys hear me? I can yeah. hear you, Dan. Yes, Dan, you my hero. You my respect, hero, Dan. Dan. Hey, um, just so you know, I'm driving through the mountains. I might lose signal. I don't know. But okay. um, talk to me, oh, Dan. You uh, you now first. Let's be clear. You're a Rams fan. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's talk about it. Talk to me, brother. Hey, also, just like y'all, since I'm driving, <coughs> I can't pull up stats in front of me now, but I'm going to tell, tell you what I know. That's fair. tell you what I know. When I say the Rams defense is too good, I don't know what's been factoring into it. Maybe the defense is to have to abandon the run because they got to keep up with the Rams points-wise, but they haven't allowed running backs to go over 100 since week two. You gotta consider. You gotta count that as something. You can look that up. Okay. You, know, you guys got two good running backs. 
But let's see if they abandon the run or not. I know the Lions are good on offense. You guys are very similar to the Rams on both sides of the ball. You guys got a better tight end, though. But, uh, okay. But now, yeah, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Now, let me ask you this question. Of the team that y'all played, right, Um, because I'm just curious, how many of those teams you felt committed to run, running the ball versus the Rams? Uh, you got the Ravens, but I'm that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, the Ravens are damn good at running the ball, the Ravens, but yeah. I, but I'm but what I'm saying is a lot of teams are since I don't know, since the Rams that came back from their bye, and even before that, because like I said, since week two, the Rams have been scoring. You got you kind of got to abandon the run when you're playing the Rams if you allow the Rams to score. So maybe we should talk about yards after the catch from the running backs. I see, I don't know the stats when it comes to that. I can't, I can't look it up, but not so, a lot of teams have been able to run just because I don't think they've been, you know, they just, they just can't, they can't afford to ha- halfway through the game. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to look at every game and figure out where the games are getting switched at. Hold on one second. Yeah, Luke's got a point here. I'm looking up games right now for the Rams. A lot of them are not committing to the run. They're just committing to the pass. And, and, and this is one of the issues that I believe has helped the, the Rams defense look better because they have been so committed to the pass that they have allowed themselves to become one-dimensional. And when you go through and you look at each game, right, and you're just looking at each game, Dan, I'm not, again, not, not saying that you say anything wild or nothing like that. But when you go through and you look at each game, starting with your first game of the season, uh, they ran the ball 18 times, right, in that game. And the score got out of hand, and they couldn't do anything because they couldn't pass. They, they they were passing too damn much, the Seattle Seahawks. But in that game, Kenneth Walker had 12 carries for 64 yards, for, and he averaged 5.3 yards a carry as long as it was 15 yards. They They didn't feed him enough. They just didn't. And when you look at that same game, they ran the Rams, ran the ball 40 times and threw it 38. So yeah, to give an example here, um, I'm looking at the Giants and the Rams game, which they won. Tyrod Taylor threw over 41 times. They only ran the ball 14 times. So, okay. yeah, no one's committed. Okay, but to be fair, you got to ask yourself why. There's, there's a lot of teams in a row that's been doing this against the Rams and not running the ball. So, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I think when you, when you have a passing lead, you're going to get those numbers. But the Lions are playing more traditional ball by running it so much. So you're going to get a different look with them running the ball. You know what I mean? Like, that, like they're they're not they're not your traditional team, like just coming in and out, airing it out. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of the things where you have to be, you know, truthful about that. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think is the best matchup the Rams have that you think is going to exploit the Lions? Um, I think that one's easy, and I, I don't think anybody can really disagree with this. It's just, and it goes for both sides, both teams. It's the secondary for both teams. So uh, I'm not gonna. I heard you say, oh, the Rams receivers aren't fast, but when you're great at route running, you don't need to be as fast as Tyreek Hill. And, and Cooper Cup is one of the best at route running. And, no, I agree uh, with the route running. You listen. This is one of the reasons why I don't believe in taking receivers in the first round unless they're such a generational talent. But I agree with the route run. I'm talking about what our weaknesses is. If you got a guy who can streak up the field, you probably going you, you probably can get that ball deep because our cornerbacks have issues with that. But the route running part, this is where teams have gotten in trouble. They have sat on balls. Um, they have this is why we get these interceptions and stuff. And they have done that by making sure that they can move the pocket with the quarterback, which Stafford will move. And Stafford, because I love me some Stafford. But until this game is over, it's Atham. He's known for gambling, and I like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like that. I just, I'm just asking you, when you talk about the secondary, uh-huh. you know, you, you feel like both secondaries are suspect, but do, are you concerned with the Lions' weapons attacking your secondary? Oh, yeah. I, I expect Amaran to, Amara, you know, your, your best wide receiver to go over 100. I, I okay. can see that definitely happen. I, I, mean, I can see him getting close to 161, but I'm not. But that doesn't itself win you the game. So, okay, you know. Shout out to my man Lions Talk from over on Chat Sports over there, aka also Lions Nation and, uh, Unite. Uh, 
uh, he gave me a congratulations on, on the new baby that's on the way. Be here somewhere around July, somewhere in that area. Um, so shout out to you. And also um, the uh, the Rams are suspect against the uh, middle of the field tight end wise, but Laporta's kind of dinged up. So I don't really, you know, I, I think the Rams I, can kind of. Like uh, Laporta also a hell of a hold, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Let him finish. <laughs> um, if Laporta was 100% healthy, I would be a little bit more worried for my Rams. But since he's not, you know, I, I just think we can kind of like focus more on Amaran. So, oh, other than that, who you guys got? Reynolds and Williams, who don't show up every time. They show up. They 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 take turns showing up. You know, the only one that's 100% c- consistent is Laporta, the running backs, and Amara. But I oh, I don't know how long you guys are gonna commit to that run. And I heard you talking about uh, the Lions run D. I know they've been good. I know they've been suspect against the deep ball. I mean, the big play, but good against the run. But do you know who's the second best running back in the league since he's been back? Is Kyron Williams. He, he got hurt in the middle of the season, came back. He's just behind McCaffrey and, and stats since he's been back, not the overall season. So... I don't know if you I, knew that, but no, no, I feel like, I feel that's a good point. That's a good point. What? But go ahead. Uh, uh, no, nah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I want to hear you guys. Well, and then where I'll let you go next. You know, I feel like that's a good point you bring up about the running back. The problem is, is I, I'm telling you, if it's one thing I can tell you is I, I, I feel like I know McVeigh really well. McVeigh knows how to create the moments surrounding certain things, and his talks, I guarantee you, have been about, hey, y'all. Uh, Matt's coming back. They're going to be upset. The fans are going to be wild. It's been 30 years, blah, 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 blah. We got to support Matt and get behind Matt. And I think you're going to see a game where you're going to be asking yourself, why are we not running the ball more? And I think the reason for that is that, you know, they're not allowing it for it to happen. So that's off rip um, I don't know. how it goes. So, you know, I, I, I just I, think that's I, how I would it say is. if we abandon the run, if any side of the team abandons the run, if any team does, if they don't run the ball as much as we're used to seeing either team run the ball, I would say it's because it's turning into a, a shootout because of the secondaries on both sides of the ball. I I, I don't think McVay wants to go with that whole Stafford narrative. I think, St- if anything, it might get in Stafford's head, and McVay's just going to be like, man, dude, chill. But I think the coaches are going to be coaches, and the players, we're going to see how they feel emotionally-wise. But I think it could be a shootout. And I think okay. the running backs are going to have to get involved in the passing game, not just less less on the run game, more in the passing game. And, let, uh, let me ask I you one more question O-lines. before I let Will go. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Let me ask you one more question before I let Will go. Give me your give me your score. How did you see this game going? Rams what? Score? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go for the Rams to win, um, and I think only one of them gets in. I, I think 31, 28. Oh, you really do got a got a shootout. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, we'll give you a question. Then I'm gonna let our next guest in. Oh, I was uh just making a comment about Toradol and what a hell of a painkiller it is for uh. From what I can tell, when the uh, when they say, "Oh, he he might be," you know, when you're someone's questionable, there's legitimately still hurt, just playing with a lot of painkillers on them. And it probably will affect his play a little bit. I'm not too worried on that end. The other thing I was actually looking at, uh, since you brought it up, the uh, inside zone, outside zone for Kyron Williams. I mean, outside zone, he's averaging 6.3 yards a carry. Inside zone, he's averaging 5.9 yards a carry. So, like, very, very effective at those runs. The only issue is... We are allowing 3.5 yards to carry and 3.7 yards to carry on those type of runs as well. So it's even though he's been the very effective runner of the ball, he's going up against a defense who is number one in rush DVOA for a reason, is number two in rush yards allowed for a reason. All right, so. shout out to my man Tom Grassi. This this brother over here works his behind off. He may be a Packers. Uh, YouTuber, but this brother has done charity work when he did uh, the visit the all of the Lion Stadiums. Um, and my guest left, but I don't know what happened to him. He visited all the Lion Stadium um, 
I'm not the Lions. He visited all of the NFL stadiums to raise money for St. Jude. Um, he's done so many other charitable things. This dude does one of my great segments is uh, fans reacting to certain things. He's funny as hell. He says, best of luck tonight. Appreciate that time. Uh, and appreciate you coming through, shouting it out. Um, we got a Facebook user who says, I like the Lions' safeties deep. That's a hell of a rotation. They're going to get some picks off Stafford. I agree. Um, I think CJ being back is huge for us, for Stafford. I think he can absolutely shut him down. Also, yeah, big yeah. fan of Tom Grassi. I'm sorry, urinating tree, that your Steelers made the uh, playoffs, but Steelers win Super Bowl. Yeah, my whole thing with the whole running uh, debate we just had with that Rams fan, um, let's not get it twisted here. Like, we have two very capable running backs, and we didn't even talk about our O-line and how they are very versatile and they move and they pull and they they just create enough space to where those guys can run. Um, we've seen we've seen Jameer Gibbs break ankles once he gets going in that secondary. Um, and then again, we, we also have you also have uh, Montgomery, who's no slouch, man. Um, another guy who if if he gets into the secondary, it's going to be a long day for that Ram or for that Ram secondary and defense. So, yeah, I think we are going to it's it's all about the trenches. Right. I think um, I think Dan Campbell's old school. He wants to win at the trenches. So I expect a lot of run in the day and then we lull them to sleep. And then golf rips the roof off the thing. Um, that's what we've been doing all year. And, uh, you know, once that secondary starts creeping up, it's it's curtains for the Rams. So I, I, me personally, I think this game will be over with at halftime. I think we'll, I think we'll, I think we'll neutralize the Rams before halftime. Uh, our boys are ready for the game. The city's ready for the game. And what better way to do it against Stafford and McVay Sunday night? I'm, I am so, juice for this game um yeah and even if even if the tight end even if we get a 90 percent sam laporta he's a very good decoy we saw him do it on the goal line last week where he kind of like i don't know i think he went for a block missed the block got up ran a route you know um yeah man i i think what we're not talking about is two the two offensive gurus and ben johnson and mcveigh uh what 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 ben johnson are we gonna get are we gonna get that 40 point a game ben johnson where he's like everything he calls is just like working um that's the ben johnson i want this game and uh and i don't even care again i want us to run the score up i want us to leave no doubt with this whether it's running the ball like like luke's point earlier if we're if it's fourth and and we're on a 10 yard line Man, hand the ball off. Let the boys get in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, let let like don't leave any points out there, man. If 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 we see they're we're getting five yards of carry, man, just keep going, man. Keep keep inserting your dominance, man. Yeah, and again, we got another Rams fan in here. I'm not knocking his hustle. I love the conversation. Come in too. There's a link that is pinned wow. on this comment section. Where all you need is a microphone, a telephone, a, a, a telephone that got a mic and internet connection. You can join. You, you just put your name as it shows up on YouTube, and have be a part of the conversation. You know, um, like that just is what it is. Dan, let me ask you a, a, another question because I'm curious. When you when you looking at this game, obviously you rooting for your team to win. Let's be honest. On defense, who scares you? For the Lions' defense, um, who scares you? Man, honestly, I don't really know too much about the Lions defense except their secondary giving up big plays just like us. But I do know about Hutchins. And that's it because, I, like I said, I don't really know too much about it. I, I, and their whole run defense, you know. But um, Kyron Williams, he – I don't know if he's – late in the season, he was averaging four yards before contact. And that's that's credit to our offensive line. So let's see which line, you know, which side of the ball wins that battle. But – um. Yeah, Hutchinson's. We need to we need to protect Stafford, and I'll say this too because I don't know how long I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on here. Uh, I like your guys' coach. I like that he goes for it on fourth down. I like it when the love- team goes for it on fourth down, especially near the goal line, because even if they don't get it, they're pinning the other offense back when I, the, I when agree. Possession ends. True. So to me, it's like get three points, 
or potentially get a safety or three and out because, you know, the, the other team's just going to be trying to get away from that goal line once they get their ball. So I like that. I don't really like the whole going for it fourth in your own territory, but whatever, you know. I, I, overall, I like that fourth down shit, so. Yeah, I, I love it too, man. I love that you came on to have the conversation. I love that you found the channel. I hope you subscribe <laughs> because I do leave it open for people to come in and, and, and talk sports regardless. Um, as long as we keep it sports, I, you come in talking religion, politics, and all that other BS, I'm going to clown you and it's not going to be fun. So, you know, but as long as we're talking ball, let's talk ball. And I was, I was happy. I'm like, man, I hope he joined. I really hope he joined. And so for you, to, first of all, to be driving through the mountains as a person who's done that before, Kudos to you, because my, my intention be like Spider-Man. I'm trying to see if rock sliding and everything. You hear me? And for you to be doing it and you just casually on the phone, kudos to you uh, for jumping in and, and having the conversation about your team and what you expect from. I hope more Rams fans jump in and have this conversation um, and point out things that they believe is going to win this game. Hey, um, honestly, um, I don't see a lot of Rams fans talking. Like, on, I, I'll be on TikTok and YouTube and uh, you know, I'm looking for clips and, and live videos all the time. I see a lot more Lions fans talking, Cowboys fans talking, Niner fans talking, and th and they've been the loudest so far, man. I didn't really see a lot of other teams talking. So uh, I don't know if you know you guys, that scares uh, me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but for today, they need to be real loud. <laughs> they need to be. They need to be historically loud. We should be. We should be forcing the referees into throwing flags on us again because the stadium is too loud. Y'all can't get a playoff. We need to go back to them days where they start to tick the tick the referees off. That's what I'm saying. No, nah, yeah, Lions have been loud the last week and a half. The, the fans, I've been hearing them. I've been hearing Cowboys and Niners fans too. The Rams fans, I don't know if they just think this is a. I don't know what they think, but I, I think it's going to be close and a shootout. That's all I, That's all I'm going to say. Okay. It. That's all. It, yeah. Shout out to Man Nara, my man Buck over here, Man Nara, who is sponsoring me and who helps make these videos possible. So shout out to Man Nara. Uh, he, he had to come in earlier and say Rams win. That's all. Leave it to Buck to stir the pot. Uh, <laughs> Dan, my man jumped on my Facebook page. Rams are talking. <laughs> he said, he, he said, you got to go check it out, Dan. They they definitely over there barking. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, yeah. But I can tell you, I can tell you my pick. Let me tell you my picks real quick. Can All I tell right, you I'm that? listening. Man, I, I know the Cowboys are better on paper, but I'm rooting for the Packers today. Because I, I don't care who takes the Cowboys out, just take them out. Because they are, Agreed. you know, they and and uh, even though I don't care, I don't think they're going all the way. It's, I think, in my honestly opinion, if the Lions were to somehow pick, beat the Rams today, let's just say they win, I'm going for the Lions the rest of the playoffs. I'm going for the Lions and the Texans on the other on the AFC side. But if the Rams win, I'm going for the Rams. I'm not one of those fans that turn off the TV once my team is out the playoffs. I enjoy football. Um, yeah, so I'm going for the Packers. Uh, I like I like the underdogs. I, I don't think the Steelers have a chance, though, against the Bills. And I'm going for the Bucks. Um, yeah. That's so I you got Bucks, Bills, Rams. Yeah. Did, so, you, did, did, did you bet on it? Did you put money on it? No, nah, I ain't got it. Okay, good, really good, good. I was going to tell you, if you was in the mood of giving money away, I'm taking all <laughs> donations. Um, <laughs> you know, I take the donations and help people who really need it. Uh, so that's that's what it is for me. All right, well, I appreciate it, brother. Um, if you got a little bit more you can talk about, I'm all down for it. If you got to go, I'm all down for it. I don't, you well, know, like I, I said. Uh, let me say this uh, real quick about, I know it's the Lions channel, but when it comes to the, the reason why I want the, somebody to take the Cowboys out, because if the pack, if the Rams do go deep, I like their. I know. I feel like the Niners are better than the Cowboys, but I feel like the Rams got a better matchup with the Niners than they do the Cowboys. That's why I want the Cowboys out because they're they're familiar with the with Niners, and the Cowboys are, are, are a foreign team. Let's just say that to the to the Rams that they can they can put up some points and the Rams might not have an answer, but we got answers for the Niners, and. Um, yeah, that's why I'm going for the pass yeah. today. I, but, listen, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I hope I, – let, let me just be honest. I think the Packers are going to beat them too. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just watched this game, and I think the Packers is going to upset the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys have been fortunate in a lot of these games. I got friends who are Cowboy fans. They are they are, they are, are like all the rest of the Cowboy fans, obnoxious and ridiculous. 
I love him to death, but sweet Jesus, like, come on. Um, yeah, I kind of got them winning too. They, that front seven of the Packers is scary, man. They're not getting enough credit, and we 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 gave we gave the league the blueprint on how to at least be um, competitive with 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 them at home. So I'm with you, Luke. I think the Packers have a they have a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so think I um, crazy... sorry. Go, go, go ahead, Cranston. I think I heard a crazy stat from 97.1 the ticket about the uh, Cowboys and Packers. Every time they've met in the uh, playoffs, I think the Green Bay Packers have taken them out at least eight times in a row. They have yet to beat the Packers in the playoffs. I don't know how accurate that statement is, but it was some crazy stat like that. Yeah, I, I like this question right here from Wolfgang. He says, why is nobody talking about how the Rams are planning to stop the Lions' offense? They all talking about how Detroit is going to stop Stafford. See, I don't think I think the I think the focus is not Detroit stopping Stafford, but Detroit forcing the game to be on Stafford's shoulder and taking the run game away in, in his number one option in cup. For me, I think if the Rams are going to beat the Lions, they're going to have to get in, get in and hit the quarterback. They got to hit golf. I think if they're going to win this game, they got to hit golf. They got to run the ball. And they got to keep the game close. See, the longer the game stays close, the better it is for them. We can't we can't have this game be close because that's not going to work. Um, exactly. So that just is. Let me bring this guest in because he's came in a few times. I've seen some of his comments and stuff. Uh, let me just put this disclaimer out there, brother. If you come in here with some silly stuff, you're going to get your feelings hurt. I promise you, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Let me bring you in. He's going by Nasty Canada. What up, brother? What you got for me? Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for the live streams you do and that stuff and all the topics you guys talk about. You know, I really think the Lions, even though I live in Canada, I think it's this year the Lions take it right to the bowl and win it. You got us going to the Super Bowl? Oh, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. It's going to be Detroit Lions in the bowl. You know what? With that kind of talk, you come on again. <laughs> I mean, hey, dude, shout out to Canada. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, Wilson. And, so uh, no. again, let, let me ask you this, then, uh, Canada. What do you think? What do you? What is it that you're seeing that gives you this hope for the Lions? What is you that? What is it that's standing out to you football wise that's giving you this hope? Dan Campbell, the coach itself. You know, he came in. He had to revive the team. He had to do new plays. Stuff that you see. I'm a Canadian and I watch CFL, but American football, as you see it, the players are clicking on all cylinders. There's no fighting on the sidelines. They're happy after every game, even if they lose. You know the team has got poise. They've got everything in their bag to win it tonight. Okay. And, and, and I personally think that they have everything to win it, too. I think that, like I said, I honestly believe, and again, to Wolfgang's point, how do you see it going the other way? The Lions have to shoot themselves in the foot, and that's just the truth. The offense cannot get stagnant. It just can't do it. And if the offense don't get stagnant, we're just <coughs> – but you cannot get stagnant by running the ball. You cannot get stagnant by, you know, using the matchup that you have to your advantage – to go against every, you know, the other team's matchups. When you start shooting yourself in the foot, the game becomes longer. When you allow the game to stay close, the game becomes harder. And at that point, that's where we have to kind of look at it. Now, leave it to my my sponsor, Buck. To, <laughs> but but what the hell is this hatchet? Give me a second, gentlemen. I got to bring in my sponsor and my <laughs> one of my biggest supporters. This dude, love him to death. Wait till y'all see. Now, mind y'all, he is a fan of this team. So he's rapping his team. Make no mistake about it. All right. And shout out to Lions Talk Live. I see you on there. He says, he says, go Lions. Hey, we're going to have to get that collab going soon. Let me bring in Buck, my sponsor. Buck, I know What's you're up? a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Bro, did you Facts. come in here with the hat on? Yeah. Uh, would you like me to put on a Super Bowl hat? I mean, like, I, I mean, wow. like, you like y'all have never seen one. <laughs> But uh, you get well, okay. nasty. You're running. diabolical. Oh my but, goodness! What you got for me, brother? Talk to me. Listen, I'm gonna so give you the solo I, layout. Yeah, so I know a lot of y'all been uh, kind of hyping up your lines just like a tad bit, and I do understand Jared Goff is leading the league, uh, fourth in passing, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, fourth or fifth in touchdowns too. Uh, Jared Goff has kind of been the man all season long. 
So many people are saying that this is going to be a defensive battle. But, Luke, i got to ask you the question. Okay. Do you think it is going to be an offensive shootout? And can the Lions really go toe-to-toe with Matthew Stafford and the Rams if they do get in the offensive shootout? I feel like this is a – this is a Goku versus whoever battle and the Lions are Goku. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about a shootout. I don't, I don't expect a shootout. I expect the Lions to win this game convincingly. I expect for them to get the lead, never waver on that lead and close this game out. I expect for them to go Super Saiyan 27,000 and and have the Rams over there looking like he just went 9,000. I want them to come out in full focus mode. It's been 30 years. We have never won the NFC North until this year. You're going to have a bunch of people who are already out right now, even though it's like 20 degrees outside here, who are absolutely liquored up in stone and ready to cause all kind of havoc. Okay? Right. I suspect that this game would not be close and the Lions will win by two or more scores. Okay. So the last time a lot of Lions fans thought that, week two, Seattle Seahawks, overtime, loss right Mm -hmm. um week what was it 13 14 when you guys went out to la and played the chargers many people thought that was going to be a blowout it took a pretty much a man-sized fourth down call by dan cable to basically seal that deal for the lions in that particular win Mm -hmm. so i've been kind of thinking if it gets into a offensive shootout does dan campbell have the cononas to stop the bleeding again and i don't think you can against the rams because because like if you try to defend the pass they still got that uh uh their their tailbacks or their young players are really really good right now what i'm trying to say their receivers are really good the running backs are really good and you have a veteran leader like matthew stafford the rams are a very very good team started off slow peaked at the right time and they are at their peak performance right now the detroit lions are still kind of look look, uh trying to suffer from that loss though from the dallas cowboys because i see a lot of lions fans on my page every day the refs cheated us the refs cheated us the refs cheated us you guys are still living three weeks ago you got a big playoff game now so i I think i think that a lot of the points that you bring up are valid points if we were talking regular season okay you're talking about a game that's not a usual game for not only the lions but not the lions fans and you're talking about a game that is fueled by the fact that many people are picking the rams team to to beat them it's fueled by the fact that they were cheated multiple times not just this just this last time against the cowboys but multiple times against the cowboys is fueled by this idea that the Lions are the Lions, and so they don't need to get these calls, and they don't need to get these breaks, they don't need to get these things. And I think the reality is, is this, that same team you speak of, I noticed that you managed to skip over the first game of the year where there wasn't a shootout and the game was close, and the Lions found a way to not only win, but win on the road in Arrowhead. And we went straight to... The Seahawks game. Well, let me tell you about the Seahawks game and what happened in there. The Lions never committed to the run. And since that game, they have. They have committed to the run. They have focused on the run. They have used the run to nauseam uh, and used that to set up many other plays. And I just think that when you look at today's game, the crowd is going to be phenomenal. That's going to cause a little bit of problems for the Rams. And I think when you get on offense, when you look at them, you're going to see an offense that every time they score, the crowd is going to become more and more drunk and enraged with what we're doing. So that's what I think is going to happen. So hopefully they got the heaters fixed up there in like in your <laughs> pride land. I went to the game at Arrowhead last night. Uh, they literally opened up a beer and it volcanoed ice sickled over. So um, yeah, yeah, I I am I actually, still cold from last night. <laughs> I actually picked. I actually picked the Dolphins to beat y'all and then I, I found out that it was called like, oh I ain't have time to switch in my pickle league and I was like damn it because I knew that that was going to be a, they when they said it was cold there it was cold it's cold here but obviously we oh. in the dome so uh but hey yes. I can't get so, mad at you I, I, I'm going to tell you something there is no difference between negative seven and negative 28 
It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. And it's cold some more. <laughs> I hear that, but he, he says no different. They still both cold. <laughs> Uh, shout out to two guys in the podcast. He says Dallas put up 43 points on the Rams, and the Rams barely beat the Giants. Come on, stop stop with the undue hype. At one point, people had Tampa, the hottest team in the league, and we went there and won. I mean, what what's you say to that, Buck? Um, Listen, I right. think – go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say the, the Cowboys-Rams game, that was different part of the season. Staff yeah. didn't even play the whole game. I can't remember if he even had Kyron Williams in that game. They didn't have Cooper uh, Cup yet either. He was yeah, still we didn't on even IR. Have Cooper Cup. Yep. So I mean, it was a whole different part of the season. I mean, the Rams have been different the last eight games of the season, seven and eight in the last yep. eight games. So we're one of the I hottest mean, teams. You see the you see the Eagles right now. We're the opposite of that. So uh, I mean, you shouldn't be struggling against the Giants, though, dude. Come on. It was cross country. Holy, you know, the, all the excuses. All I know is that we won, and I can say that. Um, yeah, what's your pizza special tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> let, me let, me, let me let my man Nasty Canada get his pizza order okay, ready. Well, I made that. order room for the game tonight, okay? Uh, <laughs> Are you ordering for pizza? Pizza? I'm going to let him back in when he done with his call call. I appreciate it. I needed that one. Uh, Ryan's Talk Live. He says, say when, Luke G, and that would be fun. You can hit me up on IG or Twitter. Shoot me a DM, and we'll get this thing set up, and we come on talk some ball. We're going to have a lot to talk about after the day because the Lions will then be on their way to looking at who they're going to play next, and I'm feeling really good about it. So, you know, get your popcorn ready. Get get your get yourself together. Uh, do as my man Nasty Canada has done and order you that pizza. Get you some wings now. Don't just get the pizza. You can't just have a bunch of damn bread. You need wings. Uh, yeah. and, and, and going from there, Dan. You know, obviously Buck is on your side. Buck is predicting that the Rams are going to win. Um, but take it with a grain. I saw he a Chiefs fan. His 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 level. He he's up there right now. Uh, yeah. he's he's up there. <laughs> He's my right my head can barely stick <laughs> on my shoulders right now because I've been oh, telling so everybody all season long, this is the most dangerous team, Chiefs team that you've ever seen because you have not seen us at our peak performance yet. Our receivers haven't caught the ball yet. Last night, my man Rashid Rice decides to catch a ball, and look what happens. I'm just telling yeah, you. That's, that's what it is. Shout out to my man Steven <laughs> Flake. He said, Detroit style pizza is the only style, no matter what the top is. Hey, no, if you ain't if you ain't eat, <laughs> Man, you're gonna make me get buddies now, dang it. Now you're talking pizza, damn it. Uh, the best see. pizza out there is New York style, hands down. Don't even... uh oh look, look, we starting a whole pizza conversation. Let me go to uh, my next question. I'm really curious about this because I, I, believe, you guys I believe that football Thanks, Thanks, listen, be safe, Thank be safe you, out there, Buck. Appreciate yes, you. Um, that's Buck, my sponsor from Man Hour. So shout, shout out, out to Buck, him. Man. Uh, yeah. my man Lions Talk Live said you better get you a Mountain Dew too. Let me see if my man Canada ready. Canada. Yo, sorry about that. I forgot nah, I was listen, on. Listen, if you hungry, you got to eat. I ain't going to never be mad. <laughs> but we got people that said, did you get the wings? Did you order some wings and a Mountain Dew? No, I, I got type 2 diabetes, so I got to watch what I eat for wings. Like, okay. Uh, you know okay. what I mean? So, like, uh, right, right now, working. I'll show you. Like, here, I'll move my webcam. I'm working in my business right now. I'm the pawn shop owner. Listen, my oh, man okay. is at work wow. getting in, getting in on the action. Shout out to my man, Nancy Canada. They want to know: Did you at least order some cheese bread? If you didn't get the wings, did you order some cheese bread to go with that pizza? Oh, I will. I'll get the extra marinara sauce, two uh, diet Dr. Peppers, and some other things. You know, I got to ball out tonight. You know, I gotta make it rain. Gotta you gotta you gotta get the food going with the football. Like yesterday's games. I knew Miami was – they weren't going to take it. I knew Texans were. They had it all there. And you know what? It's a, a Cinderella story for Shroud there for Texans quarterback. He's, he's, he's doing great. He's a phenomenal quarterback. I wish that Canadians had football like NFL. I wish we did. Yeah, I don't know why Toronto doesn't have a team yet. I mean, you got every other sport in Toronto. Just you know what blows my mind about the NFL? We're trying to establish football – in the UK, not saying it's a bad idea, 
But why are we not trying to do it next door? Like they got a basketball team, so why yeah, not a baseball team? Like, well, we have we have a football, Toronto Argonauts, but they're I not know, that good. NFL though. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about like an NFL team. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I think they don't do it because they have the art the the CFL. So that's what I'm saying. Well, we uh, had it. We had an American team years ago called the uh, Baltimore Stallions when they did the expansion. If you look oh, yeah. it up, and that was an American team that literally kick the shit out of our Canadian teams. I hear that. I hear that. All right, let me see. My man Easy Does It says Deep Dish is the way. I'm hearing a lot of Chicago Deep Dish. Um, That's from Michael Rimmer. He said, you know, Chicago Deep Dish. Uh, Everybody um, is literally like up here having a debate about what's the best pizza. I I, as long as it got freaking sauce and cheese, I'm pretty much okay. I, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not hard. Some tough crust. I mean, yep. mate, let me crust. let me ask this though. I do want to ask this question because I'm curious. I'm very very curious. Um, I just need a matchup. I'm gonna go through every single person and ask this question before I, we get into it. Uh, starting with you, Crimson. What's the matchup? What's the number one matchup that needs like like that you that you see is can be a deciding factor in this game for who's gonna win it? What do you mean by matchup like a Rams player versus Lions player? How do you see it? You think it's going to be Rams defense versus Lions rushing attack or Lions defense versus Rams rushing attack? What's the matchup that you can look at and, and make you say, if this matchup happened, that's going to decide the game? What's going to decide the game? It's going to be our corners. If we keep letting in deep balls like we have been and Stafford's a specialist in that, that's going to be a deciding factor and there's going to be a shootout. We could be looking at maybe a 40-plus score if if we let stuff like that get away, if Sutton lets them go. But I can definitely see us winning more. We've got way too many weapons on offense, though. We I don't see their defense shutting us down. All right, what say you, Rumble? What's the matchup for you? Yeah, um, yeah, I believe it, it starts in the trenches. I mean, look, uh, the Rams have a depleted O-line. They, they're dealing with some injuries on that O-line. Um, and our yeah. guys are starting to get hot. You got Hutch. Heating up at the right time, Aleem's heating up at the right time. I think we saw Pascal and Levi uh, have some plays last game as well. Um, but yeah, and and then again, our offensive line too, man. We have to neutralize their defensive line. And I think, I think we have a slight nod on both of our sides of the ball as far as our, our D line and O line. Uh, I believe that matchup happens there. We gotta, we gotta protect off, and then we gotta give Stafford. We got to give them heat. We got to bring pressure. So that to mm-hmm. me is going to be a huge part of this game, man. And I'm with Superior Records who says, yes, pineapples does belong on pizza. I am a fanatic for pineapples on a pizza. I love pineapples and ground beef with Asiago cheese on pizza. Um, and if I really wanted to take it a step further, I would get the pineapples, ground beef uh, on a like all veggie pizza. Just, just putting it out there. Um, that it just do something for me. Uh, Dan. What's the matchup that you think is going to decide that game for you? Did I lose Dan? I know the mountains didn't get him because he's still here. Dan. I'm going to give Dan a minute. Canada, what's the matchup that you say decides the game? I, You know what? I'd hate to say it, but turnovers. You know, I'd hate to see them in the playoffs and pick sixes like yesterday's game when uh, Flacco threw back-to-back pick sixes. You don't want to get behind the eight ball. I know Detroit, if they hold the lead, they're going to hold it, but they can't get behind. It's going to come down to turnovers, I feel. Not okay. not missed field goals, but I don't want any turnovers. I want to see high-flying action. You know, I want to see some uh, gritty, you know, the gritty touchdown when they do the gritty and shit in there on the, on, in the touchdown uh, area. I love that. You know, I want to see some celebrations. I want to see some uh, Terrell Owens celebrations. Get your popcorn ready game. Sort of hype it up. Uh, I was looking on the FanDuel site, and actually Detroit 74.5% favors right now. Okay. Well, listen, as long as people know, because when you know, you know. Um, My man Brandon Katz says Detroit could have used bugs in this game. I mean, I I mean, listen. If you're gonna be honest about it, they dra- they drafted a D tackle. He at some point he's gonna have to play. I'm sorry. If, if, and if he's not ready to play at the being a third round pick, then why are we trading up to get him like we was gonna miss out? So I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong, but we'll be okay. 
Um, um, we got my man Hatter House who says pineapples for sure belong on pizza. I used to work at Pizza Hut, I used to work at Buddy's, so yeah, and that's where that addiction came from working at Buddy's. Buddy's um, is fun, fun fact if you go to Buddy's Pizza and tell them you want a Big Mac pizza, it's not on the menu, it's a secret item. They will make you a pizza that tastes like an actual Big Mac, just putting it out there. Uh, Giovanni Lyon says. Luke disrespects the pizza. Hey, I, I don't think I did, but I hear you. <laughs> uh, Wolfgang says the his his matchup is unlock J Mo. Yeah, they give up a lot of big plays. You can you can play that game. Um, and do here's it. a question I have for Dan. How are you guys on the deep game? You know about our deep game, but how is your deep game? I think um, we give we oh, give some big, some big plays. We giving up some big play. I, that's why I said it's very similar to the Detroit Lions giving up the big play. That big okay. deep bomb, it's very similar. That happens almost every game, you know. So almost every game, not every game, but it happens. So that's why I'm saying I see Amaran putting up some stats today. I'm gonna, I ain't gonna lie about that. And, and real quick, uh, when it comes to where is this game one, I think it does come down to the D line on both sides, who can put more pressure on the op- opposing quarterback. You know, they need to disrupt the, they need to make the. Each team needs to make each team quarterback feel uncomfortable. So yeah, I think that's hey. what it comes down to. I mean, that's a fair point. Shout out to Calvin Dickerson. He says, what up, fellas? Uh, again, Calvin, you may not know this, but every person in here is a subscriber to the channel. You yourself can actually jump in and be a part of the conversation. The link that is pinned at the top only requires you to have internet access and a phone with a microphone. And you can jump in. But he says, what up, fellas? How can Lions get pressure on Stafford? Without giving up big plays and controlling the run game, here's the thing: hmm. they got to do one thing or, or the other. If they're going to pass the ball, then yep. I can tell you how we get pressure on him. If you're telling me that they're going to run the ball, I'll tell you how we stop the run. So essentially, if they're passing the ball, how do you get pressure on him? Stafford, you just need to put a lot of people in his face. If he sees people in the face of his receivers, he's usually a little bit hesitant to throw and he goes to his most reliable receiver he's did this with the detroit lions with calvin johnson because he trusted calvin and he would force a lot of passes to calvin even though calvin will be grossly covered um he's done it also if you look at the super bowl when he was down to just cooper cup he was grossly covered and they went after cooper cup anyway you have to put people in his face on every level that's at the linebackers the front four in the secondary in terms of the run game, it's simple. Your linebackers just got to know how to tackle. And as much as we were frustrated with Brian Burns, I mean, uh, Derek Burns from um, the Cowboy game, he is a really good run defender. And so he's going to have to get some, some snaps to be a part of that run stopping defense. In terms of us getting the pressure, Stafford is a guy that you got to hit. If you don't hit him and get him to the ground, it don't matter. He doesn't care about pressure. Pressure so, is the least of his worries. Speaking of linebackers, what's your opinion on Jack Campbell now, now that it's uh, postseason? Do you think he's gotten better or has he still been the same? He's gotten better. Um, before, I could not see a difference between him and, and Melvin. No. And so it was, it was killing me. Um, but now he's gotten better. He's starting to be a little bit more quicker in his decision-making and hitting certain holes. His tackling is getting a little bit better. I'm surprised that his coverage has not improved as much as as I've seen from when he came out of college, but it's still there. Overall, I I like what I'm seeing out of him, and I expect for him to have a big day too. See, the thing is, remember, they took that guard that I wanted, uh, Avila. Remember, I was like, hey, man, that TCU guard? They took that guard. They've they've been running it off of him a lot, so – this is where Lean McNeil in the linebacker play comes in big, in my opinion. Uh, let me make sure I don't miss nothing else. I want to go through everything else before I, I hit it. Um, I'd like to say something. I want to make sure that the refs aren't going to dictate the game tonight. That's a huge bad, point, too. You make a very good point. I have a point. bad feeling that some ref is going to be doing some stupid calls and, and ruining the game with more penalties on the freaking game. Well, who's he officiating? Who's the officiators tonight? We, it, won't, it, won't be, it won't be it won't be the bums who was out there before. What I can oh, say is, is this. I think what Canada brings up is something that I would look at and I would say, yeah, I don't like games where I feel like the officials have dictated the outcome too much. Let them play. Call what you're supposed to call when it's there, um, but let them play. 
and I, I, I expect to see some things call um, there. But to me, if the Lions go out and handle business, get up fast, those calls won't matter. They just won't. All right. Uh, that's just what I believe. Um, the, again, the Lions don't play until 8 15 tonight. Uh, I came on earlier so I can kind of get people in and talk about it. Uh, one of the formats of the people who are new to the show is whenever I come on the show, before I start the show, I do my suicide prevention message as a person whose friend has committed suicide. Uh, I've taken up that mentor to say, you know what? If somebody needs help, I'm available to them in there. And then at the end of the show, I end every show on a positive note because I do not believe uh, that, you know, you can leave something undone without giving a little bit of a positive word. Uh, and we do into the final thoughts. And I usually go about two hours, so we're a little 10 minutes short of that two-hour mark. So what I'll do is is I will go ahead and um, give people their final thoughts. Let everybody get ready for the football game because Canada got me over here trying to plot on what I was going to eat. I thought I was originally going to do breakfast food for this game, but now I'm feeling like a Jimmy John's guy right now, so don't y'all dare judge me. Um, and that pizza I did sound good, but I want a Papa John's pizza, and I ain't, I don't, ain't none in Detroit. So, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> at least if it is, tell me where, but I don't know where none is at. At least not, not over on the east side that I could think of. I can't um, think of any by me either. Now I think yeah, about it. I Googled it many times. I just can't find one. So um, let me make sure I, I get it on man. So let's start off with you, Canada. Give the people your final thoughts. Um and, and, and let you know, let them know how you see this game going. You know what? I see them shooting. I don't want to put the lions down, but I'm gonna see that they're gonna be nervous the first couple minutes. When they're on the ball, there could there won't be any turnovers, but I think it'll take the Lions a couple downs to get into the rhythm because this is a playoff game. It's major. It's the first one in years, and the fans are going to be they're going to be blowing the joint up. The fans will dictate the game too. I want to see some good passing, some good tackling. I want to see pressure on Stafford as much as I don't want the refs to call. Uh, you know, stupid calls uh, towards Lions. So I think it's going to be a good, good game. I think Lions are going to blow out uh, the Rams. Hey, I love it. Uh, Dan, my, my Rams fan who decided after this, I'm going on to support and rep my team. Give the people your final thought. Yeah, man. Um, I'm going to say go Rams. I think it's going to be a good game, possibly a shootout. Yeah, man, the Rams are they got a lot of rookies, a lot of good rookies, and but we got the experience, the Super Bowl experience just from two years ago. So you guys got home field advantage, but we got the experience on our side. I think uh it's gonna be a good game. Alex says there's a Papa John's on Mac Moran. Stop playing with me. Let me go look that up. Because if that's the case, then I appreciate you, my good brother. I appreciate you. And my man Max. I'm with Oxif says, isn't there a Papa John's? I'm not driving to Rochester Hills from Detroit for no Papa John's. By the time I get there, order the pizza, and get home, it's cold as hell. I've been and ate the pizza on my way home. Nah, I think that's a little bit too far of a drive, but I do appreciate it. Green Lantern. Ah, I just want the Papa John. That garlic thing looked like it might be worth the money. I just want to see what that tastes like. Uh, Firehouse Subs, I love them as well. I, you, didn't get, you didn't get too much hate out of me, but you definitely... That Mac and Maross one might might work. I might see if I can find that. I can um, go for Jersey Mike's. Listen, if I'm gonna get a sub, it's gonna be Jimmy John's. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. Fair, uh, fair. I like Jersey. Jersey's cool, but it's, I'm going. I'm going Jimmy John's. Uh, let me go on down to my good brother Lions. Well, I can't even call him Lions Rumble because he got on that Uncle Rumble '81. Uncle Rumble, <laughs> you. What's your final thoughts, brother? Yeah, man. Um... I, I think everybody there's this game is is uh it's huge for the city of Detroit and for us fans. Uh, and I do believe these guys are gonna be pumped. Uh they recognize all the all the storylines that this game entails, they recognize it. Um to to uh Crimson's point earlier about uh Amon Ra, um, you know, getting motivated. Um I believe I believe we're we're gonna be looking at what Dan Campbell and his Lions team did to the Broncos a few weeks back, man. I think I think he's gonna be he's got these guys so jacked up, man. They're gonna be scoring. I think we're gonna see a high scoring game on our end. And kind of like with any defense, if they have a lead, 
you're going to see a lot more, you know, uh, trying to pick the ball off and trying to punch the ball out. And um, so I'm super stoked for this game. I got the Lions. Like I said, I got the Lions winning huge, man. I think we finally put up a 40 burger and uh, we put to bed the legacy of Matt Stafford. And I think uh, I think golf golf and them are going to be victorious tonight in our first home playoff uh, game in over 30 years. So give it the Lions. I like the Lions. And uh, yeah, man, go, go, go. Uh, one pride, man. Thanks for the chat. Thanks to you again, Luke. Appreciate you, man. And uh, you guys enjoy the game. And those of you who are out, if you guys go out, remember to Uber back. Don't, don't be out there drinking and driving, man. That's, that's my, that's my little tidbit. Thanks again, Luke. Well, everyone's muted here. Oh, no, no, no. That's my fault. That's my fault. I was up here reading these comments, and my son came up here talking about some daddy. Is the Lions oh, oh. playing yet? And I said, no, son. They play tonight. I said, say, you got to play you some Pokemon yeah, he, before you he's, freaking... he, he's a little upset because he's trying to figure out why it's taking so long for the Lions to play. It's not my fault, son. I don't make the schedule. I just, I just, you know. Yeah, um, I, I get that. Shoot, I got to watch freaking uh, Red Wings hockey at 7. Then I'm going to have to cut it short because they're playing at 7. The Lions are on at 8. I'm like, who the heck? This is terrible timing. Listen, Mark I love I, I love a good hockey game, but football's my first love. It just yeah, Marcus it's, Willis. It's in my wedding vows. Look at Marcus Willis, Luke. Hey, I saw what he said. Look, somebody like <laughs> gonna go get him a mayo and ketchup sandwich. You know, we don't, <laughs> he had you know, don't play with no ketchup Hunter. around here. Uh, shout out to my man Steven. He says, sub and thank y'all. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate the sub. Um Y'all are going to bed so sad tonight. Go Rams. <laughs> I Eddie got the Ram loafers. Hey, okay. We'll see about really that. Fun guy. Hey, I'll, man. I'll be here tomorrow talking about the outcome of the game. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe notification bell. Chris, give the people your final thought. Final thoughts is I've waited for this for 20 freaking years for us to win the division and actually have a home. This is the first time I've ever seen it the entire time of the board. As old as I am, I, I've never seen us win the division. So it's like this is a, this is a freaking magical to see, and I don't want this to end. I don't care if we got to play the Packers. I don't care if we got to play the Cowboys next next time. I expect us to be there. If we got to play the Packers for a third time, come at us, Tom Grassi. We'll go for a rematch. It's hard for anyone to win three games in a row. We're going to beat you twice. Go Lions. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, shout out to my man, Dad. Dad says he going to suck because he want to see what the excuses are going to be after the game. With me, ain't no excuses, but I'm going to call it like I see it. That's one thing about me. True. You know? Uh, Luke prefers ketchup instead of sauce on his pizza. The lies that we tell. The devil's a liar. Okay? That's not true. <laughs> God, if someone uh, did that to you without knowing, oh, my God. Man, listen. And for people who don't know, there may or may not have been an incident involving a rental car and a ketchup bottle in a hot Arizona heat that exploded. Uh, that may or may not have involved me. I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, let's just say I'm not a fan of ketchup. I have never associated myself with ketchup, and for those reasons, I'm. I just I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. I know it was like a short notice stream, but everybody showed up from, from all the people uh, my, in the YouTube world, from Tom uh, to my man Mike Kimber to Bandit to two guys on the podcast to uh, Lions uh, Fan Express to uh, Rumble. I mean, every person who's jumped in and, and shown love, I appreciate you so much. Um, I don't end the show as I end on a positive note. Today's positive quote comes from the internet. I can never figure out who these people are, but when I see it, I like what I hear. Um, life is about choices. Uh, how you choose to move through life will determine how life chooses to treat you. I think this is an important um, quote because we often move through life and we put ourselves in positions to think that life just wants to get us down. But life has always been a submissive thing. See, you can conquer life if you change perspective. You can beat up on life and get everything you want out of life when your perspective is different about life. And many of you have sold yourself short. This is why you haven't started investing this year because you were afraid of losing the money. This is why many of you who wanted to start businesses didn't start businesses because you were afraid to do the research. Some of you wanted to lose weight, but there was too much for you to eat healthy. See, I figured out that the way you treat life is how life will treat you. 
perspective is what sets this up. It's the idea that you can conquer anything if you decide to do so. But when you allow for life to win, every step of the way, life will win. Life loves to take easy wins. Life loves to put itself in position to show you what is and what is not. It is up to you to tell life that this is not how it's going to go. It's up to you to tell life that, yeah, that was your story. Let me show you what the real Arthur of this story looks like. And it is up to you to take advantage of life. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for coming in. Rock on me. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. I will be back on tomorrow talking about the outcome of the game, win, lose, or draw, and giving you everything up front, honestly and truthfully. And um, since how I believe that the Lions are going to win this game by more than two scores, I'm going to go Lions win. I don't give a care what it is. It ain't going to be close. Um, go Lions. And as always, don't be no chump. Please, please do your research. I'm out.